set. Barometric pressure. John, just shoot. Windage. Windage, just, just hold center, John. Elevation. John, your scope's already set up. Just just uh, go ahead and shoot. Are you using the binoculars? No, I, I can see the target perfectly clear. Use them. Distance to target. Tar tar target's still there, John. Distance. John, it's one yard in front of you. The target's right there. Shot. Just shoot it. You missed the target. Hand me the Kestrel. All right, hey folks, Ryan won't stop playing with his Kestrel, so good job for <laughs> Guys, we already did a video on how to set up a sniper rifle. If you haven't already checked that video, make sure you do so. In this video, we are going to be talking about essential gear and accessories so that you can make the long distance shot. Uh, Ryan was a sniper in 1st Ranger Battalion. I was a door kicker in 2nd Ranger Battalion, 2nd Bat, Best Bat. Needless to say, I don't, I don't know what in the world's going on with this. I got some setups based on his recommendations and his book, but here I want him to teach me how to uh, actually get the uh, right equipment and then make shots on target really far away without you having to be here telling me what to do. All right, well. So uh, what do I need other than gun and glass? The first step to getting the right equipment, and I know this is gonna sound like I'm being a smart one, but I'm not, is to avoid the wrong equipment. That's... So you guys wanna go spend money on things? It's focus on the one or two pieces of things that you need now, and then graduate as you go. Don't run out and, for example, go buy the most expensive Kestrel they have because you think you need it. Right. So it's not that this isn't good, it works at what it does, but it's not the right equipment maybe for you now. Right. What's good for you now is maybe getting uh, a spotting scope. So when you're actually out there shooting, you or your buddy can see what's going on with the wind. You can see what's going on with the target impacts. That's way more important to me than getting a Kestrel or even binoculars. I have a much better time, I don't know about you, when I'm spotting for anything, using a quality set of binoculars it makes it so much easier for me to see target distance, depth of field, and everything. Mm -hmm. I will often, with sniper students, be standing with a spotting scope in front of me with the binoculars instead watching what's going on and giving them corrections and only get down to that spotting scope when I need to make a precise adjustment. It. Uh, it's, it's one of these maxims I really believe when it comes to long range shooting is more magnification is not necessarily your friend. Right, this is your rifle out here that you have set up. You have, the scope goes up to 25 power. Yeah. My scope goes up to 18. God, you know shoot. why I went 25, right? Because it's better than 18? Because I couldn't find it in 30. In 26? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so I shoot a 45. Know. Actually, Interstate Guns supplied all this setup, so this thank is... you, Interstate Guns. For sp I'm in the sponsor yeah, plug. Sorry. Shut up, dude. You're not in charge. I'm in charge of the sponsor plug of the video. You get everything All right, else. try it again. Try it You're again. You're literally stealing my spotlight. All right, start Shut again. Up. Interstate Guns. So what we say? I'm gonna shoot you. I'm gonna shoot you with this gun and I won't even make any adjustments. Interstate Guns, thank you for sponsoring this video and hooking us up with all the uh, doodads. You guys are all right. All right, back to you. So <laughs> when it comes to the accessories, stop and really think about what you're getting. Don't race out there and buy all the fancy equipment. Um, when it comes to shooting long range, you need to know what's happening to the bullet after it leaves your rifle. Right. Okay. You, your rifle, your scope, your ammo is what matters here. And everything you do or fail to do is what's gonna make you hit or miss, okay? But once you do everything right, you apply proper fundamentals, you had the right settings for everything. When that bullet leaves, things change its path. I mean, it doesn't leave in a straight line when it comes out of the barrel. Even though it might travel like this to the target, it's actually falling the second it leaves the barrel. And the biggest effect on that bullet's path is gravity. Right. The good news is it's really easy to account for gravity. We know what gravity is gonna do. The second biggest effect we have on a bullet's path is wind. And the bad news is that is absolutely the hardest thing to learn to account for. Right. You're gonna learn, and you gotta practice, you gotta get good at it, but it's really hard to account for. So gravity though, if you don't know the distance of the target, you're gonna miss. I don't care how good of a scope you have, how good of a rifle you have, how good of a shooter you are, if you don't know that the target is 500 versus 1,000 yards away, you're, you're gonna miss because you don't know how much to adjust up. All right, so we've learned a lot, but now it's time to destroy fruit as if we hate it. Three quarter mil left. Set. Oh, exploded! Wow, that really did. All right, what now? You gonna do the pumpkin now? Yeah. All right, three quarter mil left. 
center. Right through it. Doesn't do anything? Nope. Let's move on to the next watermelon, which is to the right of the black target. Got it. Three quarter mil left. Center. Oh! <laughs> Let's see if we can go three for three. Next watermelon, three quarter mil left. Two for two. Let's go for the third one. Three quarter mil left. Whoa. Half mil left. Center. Best one yet. Yes. So let's talk about what you need to know to know the target's distance. Perfect. Okay? If you're at a range that already has known distances, save your money. Don't get a rangefinder. Right. But if you don't and you're in the real world, laser rangefinders are the way to go. You sure you can learn how to use the reticle in your scope and there's math and formulas you can use to measure how big the target appears and how big the target should be and figure it out longhand. You can do it and I make students do it to learn how to learn the concept. Yeah. But come on, we, we're, we're past that now. It's not fast enough. You don't really need to do it anymore. Right. Get a rangefinder. Uh, you don't have to spend a ton. You need to get a rangefinder that's at least going to work out to the distance where you're going to be shooting. Uh, my favorite rangefinder is this one, but this is, you don't get better than this one, so you don't have to jump to the top of the line. This is the SIG Kilo 2400 ABS. It has all the ballistic software, all the environmental sensors in here. It's got a laser rangefinder that works easily past 2,000 yards. Cool. Awesome rangefinder, but you can start with lower rangefinders. I think um, one of my favorite budget rangefinders is one of the Vortex entry level ones. It works great for you to know the distance and to your And I have that one. Guys, in the video description below, you'll find links to all this different stuff. We'll even label it and graduate it, but it'll be stuff that Ryan approves. So if you, this is your budget, here it is. So all that stuff, make sure you check out below. All right. So if you know the distance of the target. There's so few things I get to talk so about. It's what? just learning and listening. But well, that's what you're I'm here like, for, right? Well, I yeah, am, yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Second bat's here to learn from first bat. I get it. <laughs> so. He hates that guy. I'm sorry, you see it, bat, he hates that. I, I failed you. I've let you down. I did hate that. I just had nothing for it. So you know the distance of the target. Right. That's so what? Every rifle is going to shoot different at that distance. My 308 is surely not going to shoot the same as your 6.5 Creedmoor at that distance. So we know the distance, but we need to know what to do about it. What your bullet is actually going to drop at that distance. That's where we start getting into ballistic calculators. That's where we get into ballistic cards. And guys, be very, very careful with ballistic software. So many guys think it is the end all be all. Like, oh, well, I have this computer and it gives me to the decimal point what I should be doing. And it takes into account, you know, the, the atmosphere and the humidity and the temperature and the spin of the earth. And it takes yeah. all this into account and therefore it must be perfect. I've got to uh, find that. <laughs> you look that up. So, I'll talk about so it. good. Keep going. So having all that in, in mind, people think that somehow they're going to get a better result. Well, there's a term called GIGO, garbage in, garbage out. If you're just guessing on these things, it's not going to work. And I will tell you what I see all the time as guys will show up to the range they'll pull out their smartphone and they'll get out their ballistic software and they're getting ready to shoot and i'll even have a conversation with them and say hey we're just going to confirm our dope on 500 so go go ahead if you're shooting minutes of angle for a 308 i say it's 12 minutes i'm probably going to be right because i just know it's 12 minutes at 500 for a 308 but instead they go no hold on tick, 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 tick. five minutes later they're still <laughs> playing with it and then they're out going getting air samples, and they're asking questions like, hey, what altitude are we at? Do you know? They're still doing this. Then they get down, they make a setting, they shoot, and they miss. And they go, huh. Well, that's weird. This is, this is normally perfect. And they go through it, and they miss again. Then 15 minutes later, they finally figure it out. And they're stressed, because they just told me how this is the best thing ever. And they go, oh, oh, I had this setting here of the oh, 50 yeah, settings. Yeah, yeah. That's Meanwhile, the problem. You made it. your hits in the first few seconds, and you're over there heating up an MRE. If I'm ever in some Hollywood sniper on sniper style shootout someday, yeah. I hope to God that guy believes in ballistic calculators. Because I want to shoot him through his ballistic calculator. Because right. he's going to be sitting there doing this instead of shooting. That's, that's words from the real deal. Guys, I, I, Ryan's not going to brag on himself, but Mark Wahlberg himself. <laughs> Mark, Mark Wahlberg himself. <laughs> taught Ryan everything he knows about long-range precision shooting. I mean, oh, all, I was hoping you are going the other way with that Coriolis one. Coriolis yeah. effect and 
yeah. all that stuff. Yeah, how to shoot cans of stew. So uh, yeah. uh, Ryan wrote this book. Before I even checked out uh, or met Ryan this uh -huh. morning for the very first time, I read his book, went through it, and I like to make notes and everything. But in the section dealing with the ballistic calculators, he's making fun of folks that are getting all this data that just, it leads to analysis paralysis, and uh -huh. it doesn't have really... In competition, maybe that's great. In real world, you got a the limited amount of time to be able to make a shot before that target disappears, right? So he puts this uh, for like his- uh, I talk about guys that have their, their notebooks and they write every detail down in the notebook and I ask them, right. why are you writing that down? If that information is not gonna help you next time, why are you writing it down today? So I right. gave a sample diary example. So he says, yeah. dear diary, I shot a bunch and I missed a bunch today. <laughs> today was the <laughs> autumn equinox the sun was kind of bright, the soil had high mineral content, and there were exactly three clouds in the sky. Also, Ryan Kleckner yelled at me for capturing air samples in Ziploc baggies and for closing, <laughs> and for closing my eyes before I smacked the trigger. He is a jerk. So uh, I guess that's not what I should put in my... Uh... So before you get ballistic software, before you get any of this other stuff, get a notebook. Get a notebook to write down information. Just, I challenge you, ask yourself why you're writing something down. Mm -hmm. If you're writing something down because you're gonna track it, you're gonna do something else different next time, then great, write it down. But if you're writing down the mineral content of the soil or what people are doing, that's useless information. Stop writing, start shooting. But no, you keep a log the way I used to do it. I mean, when we, we were in the military, I didn't have ballistic calculators yet. They didn't have right. ballistic software. You salty dog. I know, I'm old school. He we had have slide his, rules though. He had his LCE. Camoed face. No, we still had racks, but yes, might as well be. I was teasing. Yeah. I was putting you back there. Back, back in the day. We're had a slide there. rule. The ab so the abacus, we'd tie it right here. You pull the beads down and did count. Did those come with an MLOC attachment? How did the abacus mount? So, <laughs> so the way, the best many... thing you could possibly do is write your stuff down. Okay. So that ballistic calculator I was just picking on, they're still super useful. Okay. I still use them for referencing what it should be in a perfect world, but every scope track's different, every rifle's different, everything's different. So you can start with that, but you know the best way to know what this actual setup is gonna do at 1,000 yards? Shoot 1,000 yards. Yeah. And then fine tune exactly where it needs to be for you to hit where you want at 1,000 yards. Look at what the setting was and write that down. Next time, there's a good chance you know exactly what to do instead of relying on ballistic software. So having that written down, even just three by five index cards kept in the notebook, super, super helpful. I think it's the way to go. Got it. So that way you're not doing all the math every single time. Correct. Half mil left. Are you ready? Sure. I have control, I have control, I have control. Five, four, three, two. <laughs> Did you hear the pumpkin? Yeah. Pump mark. Yeah. I heard the two rounds hit. Yeah. Let's do it again. Well, your dope is on for this gun. I have control, I have control, I have control. Five, four, three, two. Yeah. Oh, Isn't that pretty cool? That's awesome. <laughs> so this is what we actually learned in Afghanistan from spotter shooter. Uh -huh. uh, when we first deployed, we still had the spotter on a piece of glass. Mm -hmm. Where now I could be the spotter like this and I can be looking at the target. I could have my dope on and be holding the half mil left I told you. So if you shoot and say it was a good shot and I see the bullet impact right at the one mil mark, because if I'm already holding the wind hold, wherever I see the bullet impact, I just move that spot and shoot. I don't have to do any math because mm. I'm holding it too. So you could, we're like, this is way better. I just hold a half mil. Bullet impacts in the dirt at the one mil right and you called it clean. I just go, Mer boom. It's just like, boom, miss, boom, hit. That's awesome. That fast, it was much more effective as a two man. So John asked me if I could bring a Kestrel. I actually had to go find this. Measures wind speed and... So yeah, it does the temperature. It does everything that this one does. It measure, measures my environmentals, but it adds wind speed in there. And it has the, the ballistic software in here, but it's a very clunky setup to do it and they're expensive. And here's my problem with it. You see the wind meter there. Great, I get to measure the wind. Uh, why wouldn't you want to know the wind speed and direction? I think you would, but it lets people get too reliant on data. Like John says, paralysis analysis. Analysis, analysis paralysis. paralysis. Yeah. Either one works. The problem is people will sit there instead of shooting and be measuring, oh, I'm exactly 4.7 miles per hour. And then they'll use the ballistic software at 4.7 miles per hour at a thousand yards. This is what my bullet should do. But the problem is, what if a hundred yards in front of you, the wind direction changed? Just because it's going from right to left here doesn't mean that it's not going from left to right all the way to the target. 
I can guarantee you one thing. If that's what's happening, you're going to miss using this data. Yeah. So sure, if you want the wind speed, great, get the wind speed. But unless you have one of these every 100 yards all the way to the target yeah. and you're balancing it all out, I don't think it's as helpful as it is to take a good set of binos or a good spotting scope, look down range at your target and focus on your target, and then back the focus off about two thirds of the distance and you'll see the heat waves in the air. Even That's in the it. snow, you'll see the heat waves. Can you not just use your optic on your gun? You can, but these are gonna be better. Okay. Especially when you start shooting and you have the heat waves coming off your suppressor. Why, your just cause? Uh, better clarity light. and you don't have the heat of the barrel messing with you. Gotcha. Right, so you can see those heat waves. Now I can actually see what's going on with the wind. So I'm not against accessories, they're cool. I'm just against you going and spending a ton of money on things. Got it. And then really getting down into the minutia and not learning how to shoot a gun well. I mean, imagine if I were able to use all these cool toys and get the exact perfect firing solution and then jerk the trigger. Got it. I still miss the target. Yep. So focus on the fundamentals, graduate through things as you need to, borrow equipment, go to the range with guys that know more than you about long range shooting and see what they're using, try it out, see if you like it, and just go slow. Don't go on a spending spree right now. It doesn't need to be that complicated. Got it. Uh, some other things. Sling, which I'm missing from this. Yes. Bag, bipod. Um, yeah, so. Yeah, what about those things? I think that the reason that most people miss, including myself, is because you had an unstable platform or you had improper trigger control. Most of the time, that's what causes someone to miss. Okay. okay. Once they know what to do for their settings. I'd say shot anticipation usually affects the And that's bad what makes the bad control. trigger control, correct. Yes, okay. and so shot anticipation. So we need to have a stable platform. You can have a stable platform with bipod legs. Those are great. I'm not against bipod legs like some people think I am. The only issue I have with bipod legs is that they move differently on different surfaces. These bipod legs are gonna bounce different on this wood table as they are in the mud and the ground versus a car hood versus the, the roof of a house or whatever you're shooting off of. I like a consistent platform. One thing I repeat in the book over and over is consistency is the key to accuracy. So I love shooting off of a bag. I fold the bipod legs up, I lay the rifle on the bag and I can nestle it down as deep as I need to or move it up as high as I need to to shoot off of. This does a few things for me. It gives me a consistent platform. It allows me to reach up and get water or grab some lickies and chewies if I need to. I, I can get you. I can get more ammo up here. It's not gonna be ballistic protection, but it does protect me a little bit of something from in front of me. So a bag, to me, is part of a rifle system. The two always go together. Got it. And a sling, a sling needs to be on your rifle. It is a shooting tool. It is not meant just to carry your rifle over your shoulder. It is what's gonna help you in the real world when you can't shoot in the prone. All right, so in the real world, the prone is not really practical. If you go overseas and dive down on the prone, what do you see? You see curbs and trash cans and car tires and wheels. Right. You can't see targets. If you're a hunter and you go out in nature and you dive down on the prone, you see bushes and grass and you can't see the stuff. So very often we have to get up off the ground. The sling is what's gonna allow you to have a stable platform in these awkward shooting positions. Got it, cool. All right, what about ammo and stock sock? That's real important, right? It's true, for having the stable position and we rest the front of the rifle on something, sometimes it's a little hard to keep this stable as well. Right. Uh, one thing I like to do is grab anything. You can use what we used to use was sand socks, which is literally taking an old hiking sock and putting some gravel and sand in it and tying a knot into it. Uh, there's many companies that make nice ones. We'll put some links down in, your, in the video to some ones I recommend. Uh, even some bigger bags I use like these. This one breaks down into smaller bags. I can use this up on the front of the rifle for support. I can even throw this one on the back of the rifle if I want to for support. And it's extremely lightweight. Doesn't weigh much to keep your bag down. So it makes for a stable platform to be able to get nestled in there and to shoot if you can do it. Uh, for ammo, you know, you get what you pay for with ammo. Uh, match grade ammo is important, but match grade ammo doesn't necessarily mean higher performance. Yeah. I, a lot of people think that, oh, it's match grade, it's faster somehow. It just or it's means whatever. greater consistency. Correct, which yeah. actually might mean slower. Right. So the match grade variety of a certain make and model ammo might actually be slower right. than whatever else they sell. It's just, it's consistent and that's the key to accuracy. It's the same every single time. So it's loaded with more tighter tolerances and they're a little more careful in how they load the thing. Uh, if you have a choice between one ammo or the other, uh, go with the one that has the higher ballistic coefficient. Now, we won't get into it. You, we wanna get into geek out on it, Go check out a book and read about ballistic There's coefficient There's other sources. We're, we're hanging out But you'll here. see them on the back of the box here. You'll see things like G1BC and G7BC. Guys, here's what you need to know. If you're comparing two different boxes of ammo and you want the best for long range, go ahead and get the one with a higher number for the BC. Again, we won't even get into the differences of them now, but if you see a certain value on one and a certain value on the other, the higher number means the bullet moves through the air more efficiently. 
Got it. Which means it's not going to slow down as much, which means it's not going to drop as much, which means it's not going to be affected by the wind as much. So good, consistent ammo that shoots well out of your gun, meant for long range target shooting is going to give you the best results. Figure out how to get a stable platform, whether that's bipod legs and bags and slings and rear bags. Figure out how far away the target is and what you're supposed to do about it. And with wind, you're just going to have to practice. You're just going to have to trial and error, learn and figure out what you can do with wind. You master all those, there's not much else to do. You're going to be good at it. All right, well, let's, uh, let's shoot, man, right? Let's do it. Cool. All right, guys, thanks so much for tuning in. Make sure you subscribe, hit the notifications bell, like, comment. Make sure you follow Ryan as well. I'm going to put his stuff down below in the video description. Interstate Guns, thank you again. And uh, guys, till the next time.